Go. Yes! Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> And I think we're going to all try and take a, an eDNA sample Excellent. together. So we can see how it actually um, works. Yeah, these are our experts and we're going to walk through it all together. So if you want to come around yep. here, we're going to put gloves on. Um, gloves, why are gloves important, guys? finding tuna, tuna in our DNA sample. This has happened in real life and we've had to go back and find out what people ate for lunch and ruin it. Okay, you're your science teacher. Um, science technician. Science technician. Tell us what's going to happen today as well. Because these guys are giving the technical one. You can actually break it down and make it simple. So we can understand, what, understand the, the process. Absolutely. Yeah, there's one for you, sir. Um, you've got to need a syringe as well. There's some of these syringes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> you can actually fill it. Try, try and put it, that's yeah, it. No, fill no, it all the way up to the top. All the way? Yeah, or almost wow. all the way. There we go. So you get a bit more power. And then what? you've got sort of big air bubble in your syringe. If you can hold before you put your filter on, just hold the syringe up and just push the air bubble out because that actually makes it harder. Good, you've got to, an air bubble. Um, um, so it's, it's foams a little bit. Um, we can leave these ones here. Um, and then I think we're going to go and walk. Three, go! go. Yes! Oh. <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> Lines. Is that an individual species? It's an, it's an individual DNA yes. molecule. 
Obviously, this one's got a lot of letters versus that one. Yeah, what's that's the relevance of that? Great question. Um, so when they come off the sequencer, there's there's just a lot of sort of natural variation in the way each each strand has sequenced. Um, and so the first thing that happens in the pipeline, the protein links to exactly the same region of DNA. So then you can line them all up and process them together. Um, so yeah, we've got a, a team of absolutely brilliant people who do that. It's monitored ponds in the world because we use them for all our R and D. But you get so so this platform basically the first thing is just to try and bring it to life so we can see what we've found. So um, smooth newt is found in the pond. Smooth newt is found in the That's pond. Yeah. Is that quite a common newt? It's more common than the great crested newt, um, which is the more protected one. Um, but they're, they're just such cool animals, actually. Yeah. You don't see them very often. No, so they're vulnerable, aren't they? I mean, you, just, uh, you know, they, they have to have the habitat quite right for them. Yeah, they're generally they're, they're quite right in a completely different way. Oh, you see it. So you've got a lot of fish in here. And out of interest, your DNA bank. Mm. How did you come about that? Because presumably. That must be evolving the whole time as we learn all more new species and all sorts. All the time. So we mostly use um, publicly available reference databases. So basically any time anyone does research and sequences DNA, when they publish it, they have to submit their sequences to a sort of um, a public bank. You basically everything gets a, a good species match. If you're working on freshwater fish in West Africa, only say 25% of those will get a species name, but you'll still have all of the other species and it will just say this is a species in this family of fish. Well, so if you very take much. home we've got both uh, soil and the kits in there as well. Excellent. So you can um, now you show me how to do it, I can show you how to do it. <laughs> um, give them a go. Hopefully yeah, uh, the pack today has helped. Yeah, well they well. you know what I find. Um, and then send them back to us and we'll dissect your time sacks off. Yes, all sounds good. We've talked just about Double my science knowledge, and I had for a horse in the door. So it's very impressive. It's a very lovely school children who are equally as excited and uh, willing to get involved in it all. I heard you nearly got squirted. Not me, Not that one did. <laughs> but, uh, but it's been, uh, I mean, some of you know this better than I do already, um, ETNA, but this is new to me from Earthshot. So it's been really interesting. John, you've invested in it already. We have indeed. How. How does that come about? And what have you seen that you particularly like for your side of things? Well, for us, we, we invest, just as long as the name suggests, we, we, we invest in just climate. We, we also concluded very quickly that we couldn't invest in climate if we weren't also solving the nature crisis. And so finding and creating a business to invest in that. And as we looked around for the tools and the technologies that were going to enable food and in agriculture to transition, and what particularly do you see about it that you think is of, of use? Is it, is it getting a database? Is it understanding more data around certain areas that helps inform our decision making? I, I think getting the data is, is, is going to be the core, but the, as, you, as you probably saw this morning, the ease and the ability to roll this out. So we can see what else does. The way to see how they get the pressure is they also need to see again. Thank you.